Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at the situational leadership model. So first, some background. Now, the situational leadership model was developed by Dr. Paul Hersey and Kenneth Blanchard. It's predicated on the belief that there is no one best style of leadership. The best style of leadership will depend on the situation. And that means the task to be performed and the makeup of the team performing the task. So thus, the best leaders take the time to weigh the many variables affecting their situation and then select their leadership style to best match their situation. So let's look at the model itself. Now, most of us naturally adjust our style to suit the situation, whether we realize it or not. So for example, we give a newly hired team member more slack to make mistakes than seasoned employees. And we might direct tasks more closely when a deadline is urgent and important. Now, the situational leadership model is a framework that helps us make this adjustment of our style only in a more deliberate way. So the framework is going to help us diagnose the situation and then select the best leadership style for that situation. Now, in the model, the X axis indicates the degree of directive behavior that the leader exerts. And that is the amount of direction that they give their team. Now, the higher the direction, the less able the team is to make decisions for themselves. And the Y axis indicates the degree of supportive behavior the leader uses. And that is the amount of support they give their team. Now, the higher the support, the more the leader helps their team to make decisions and perform their job or their role. And at the bottom of the diagram here, you can see D1 to D4, and that represents how well developed, how skilled and how motivated a team or an individual is, with D1 being the lowest level of development and D4 being the highest. So the model proposes that there are four primary leadership styles. And the first is S1 or a directing style of leadership. And this style of leadership is associated with autocratic leadership. A directing leader will make all the decisions without consulting subordinates. They will simply inform their team of the decision they have made and expect their team to carry out their instructions. Feedback from the team is discouraged and the directing leader decides who, what, how, why, and when. Next, we have S2 or a coaching style of leadership. And with this style, the leader still defines the roles and the tasks, but in contrast to directing, they are more receptive to input and feedback from their subordinates. Now, these leaders sell their ideas and plans to their subordinates to obtain their cooperation. Now, this leadership style is closely related to the democratic style of leadership. Sports coaches are often associated with this style of leadership. They put players into position and then direct the group as a whole in order to obtain the best performance. Now, the next leadership style is supporting and the supporting leader will participate in idea curation and decision making, but most of decisions will be taken by the team as a whole. Now, this type of leader may appear to be quiet because they lead by example and appear to be an equal team member embedded in the team rather than the ruler of the team. And the final leadership style is delegating. Now, delegating leaders are, of course, responsible for their team, but they provide minimal direction and guidance. It's a hands off style of leadership, similar to laissez faire leadership where the group makes almost all of the decisions. Now, this type of leader is usually more concerned with communicating their vision of the future than directing day-to-day -day activities. Now, they will decide what the next step should be to move towards their vision, but it's left completely to subordinates to determine how to achieve that next step. Now, alongside identifying four leadership styles, the model also identifies four levels of employee development. And the first of those is D1, which you can think of as being an enthusiastic beginner. 
And here your subordinate is low competence, but high commitment. Basically, they are inexperienced, but they're enthusiastic. Your subordinate may show willing, but they lack the specific skills they need that the task requires. Next, we have D2, the disillusioned learner. And here your subordinate has some competence, but low commitment. They have the skills they need, but for some reason, they are unwilling or lack the confidence to perform the task. And maybe the task or the situation is new to them. Next, we have D3, the capable but cautious performer. Now here your subordinate has high competence, but variable commitment. Your subordinate is more capable of performing the task than at the D2 level, but for whatever reason, they're unwilling or lack the confidence to perform the task. And finally, we have the D4 level, the self-reliant achiever. Here, your subordinate has high competence and high commitment. Your subordinate is confident in their ability to perform the task, but not only that, they're committed and they take responsibility for the task. Now, a couple of things to watch out for. It's important to realize that the development level of your team can change over time. So your team might be D1 today, but that doesn't necessarily mean they'll be D1 in a year from now. And development levels are also task specific. So a member of your team could have a D4 development level for a task they've performed multiple times, but a D1 level for a task which is new to them. So now that you've determined the development level of your subordinates, you can use the following table to select the most appropriate leadership style. So for example, if your subordinate development level is D1, you would use a directing style. If it's D3, you would use a supporting style, etc. Now, as an example, suppose you've just been appointed as manager of a new team to work on a brand new project. Now, in this instance, it makes sense to categorize your team's development level as D1. And that's because you are new to the team and the team is new to the project and the type of work the project is going to involve. And what that means is that you adopt a directing style initially where you're telling the team exactly what you want them to do. But over time, you realize that the team is very skilled, but it's unfamiliar with this particular type of project. And in a nutshell, you assess that their development level is D3. They're capable, but they're cautious because the project is new to them. And when you've made that assessment, you decide to switch to a supporting style of leadership. You work closely with the team, almost as if you were an integral member of the team yourself where you encourage ideas and support team members to help build their confidence. Now, a key point to note from this example is that the most effective style of leadership is dependent on the situation you find yourself in at that moment in time. And of course, the situation is going to change over time and you will need to adapt your leadership style correspondingly. Now, one thing that can trip a lot of people up when they're investigating the situational leadership model is the different terminology they come across. It can be very confusing. So in this video, we've been looking at the latest version of the situational leadership model, and that's called SL2. And that was developed by Kenneth Blanchard. But the original version of the model basically had the same underlying meaning, but many of the terms used were different. So in the original model, directing, coaching, supporting, and delegating were referred to as telling, selling, participating, and delegating respectively. And the de development levels, D1 to D4, were referred to as maturity levels, and they were labeled M1 to M4. And obviously that can be confusing if you're encountering all these different terms, but don't despair. Whatever version of the model you use and whatever terminology you're looking at, the underlying meaning is basically the same. So in summary, the situational leadership model is a framework that states the best leadership style will vary depending on your situation. And the model proposes four leadership styles, directing, coaching, supporting, and delegating. And each one is appropriate at a different stage of subordinate development. 
So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.